I need to I need to be able to submit. Oh, okay. Um, just to finish a little bit more about the um, see, I tied my scarf a little better, and I have my Christmas bingley on there. <laughs> I have a lot of little Christmas pins. I try to keep get, keep in the spirit, you know. I mean, it's not as much fun as when I had a little boy and I was living back at home and me and all my sisters had really small kids and, you know, it isn't as much fun as then. But I try to, you know, wear my little Christmas buttons and little Christmas earrings and I decorate anyway. And, you know, I usually buy myself something kind of special, you know, just buy myself something, you know, and... um stuff like that but i wanted to um um uh, reiter reiterate a little bit more about what i was talking about towards the end about raven knight um the old earl the earl dies and um like i said before because sir guy has lost his father um at an early age he kind of understands and so there, there's kind of a truce a truce and oh, as a matter of fact, it just put that in my mind. Um, he approaches the castle, you know, after the old Earl has died under um, his banners, of course, but perhaps under a flag of truce also is what I'm thinking. Even though they're not at war, physically at war, but um, he arrives and um, the... My female character, the one, the more that he had brought back from the Holy Land, um, the Robin Hood kind of quote unquote character has sort of um, helped her hide. When she first came and was first in York jail, you know, dungeon, um, Robin and the others had helped her kind of escape and kind of hid her away in the woods and that kind of thing. So she's kind of tight with them. And um, it kind of comes to the point where she has to draw the line between her faithfulness to her um, friends, these people who had helped her, and her um, love for this man, you know, for Sir Guy. And it's, of course, it's after they slept together, you know, that she has this, um, I don't know, change of heart. She still isn't, she's still, well, she's still kind of naive because she doesn't really know what's going on. Actually, what's going on is Sir Guy is trying, him and some nobles, what they're trying to do, I don't know how much you guys know about medieval um, history and you can go and look it up if you want to, but um, um, the king, actually King Richard is in the Holy Land fighting and his brother, um, Prince John is left in England to um, kind of rule. And what Gisborne and those guys want, his little clique, he has a little posse, I guess, you know. They want um, John to become king so that they'll have all his power because number he doesn't have any money. The, the king doesn't have any money. Um, uh, Prince John doesn't have any money of his own, actually. So they figure if they can get him on the throne, and then I mix some historical stuff. You just got to read it. It, it. It's it. It like I said before, you have to when you're writing historical stuff, you have to um, put a, a lot of um, research into your um, into your work so it'll be feasible. Um, Gisman decides after Old Earl dies, he decides he's going to the you know to Huntington to the castle to you know pay his respects, and he's kind of walking in there naked you know what i mean he he doesn't he's not armed he doesn't have any uh he has a squire with him who's really a son um he has a squire with him and he has um the female character my female um heroine with him and what i was saying about her um not choosing sides because the women kind of stay neutral like um Lady Marion and um, my character, they stay kind of neutral. They're like, you know, this is the men's thing. Let them do this. <laughs> you know, they're not, they stay kind of uh, um, neutral and they remain friends, of course. And it's very surprising to um, um, Huntington when his quote unquote enemy comes walking in to say, look, I came to, you know, talk to, you know, I just came to pay my respects because, you know, the old Earl and my father were close and, you know, he was a good man, blah, blah, blah. 
And while he's there, you know, Huntington is like, well, look, you're here, man. Let's talk. Let's talk this out. Let's get this. And he's like, so guy's like, no. And um, what so guy tells um, my character is that if she, she wants to go with him, she wants to go with him. And um, he says, well, if, you know, if you appear with me under my colors, you know, under my banners like this, you will, um, you know, basically you've chosen your side, you know, you've drawn your um, um, line in the sand and she does go with him, um, escort, is escorted um, by him and um, his squire and she does go to, um, now later she finds some stuff out and she doesn't really like it, but you know, some different things. And also it's another little, a uh, little bit more about this and then I'm gonna go, it's another good so uh, scene I really like. Um, I have to plug it in. I realized I, I need I need to put this in. I had the scene in my head, but I need to plug it in. Um, I kind of touched on it a little bit. There's a um, accident in the mine. And, uh, you know, she she finds out about it from the boy that, you know, tends her fires and, and, and that kind of, you know, the thing, one of the servants in the castle, she finds out. And, um, so she approaches, you know, Sir Guy about it and says, yeah, well, you know, the um, villagers, well, what happens is he's he's closed the mine till the, you know, the, um, whew, hit the airplane. Here we are right on the, um, what you call it, flight path, I guess, for uh, the Air Force Base. So in the summer, sometimes you can't hear yourself think. Um, but enough about that, that's classified the troop movements and stuff, but trust me, it's loud sometimes. Um was it the oh she she the um there there's been like I said there's been an um an accident at the mine. Of course he's closed the mine and she says um she goes to approach him about about it and he says well I've taken care of it. I've you know I've sent food, I've sent animals, I've sent um you know, I've suspended taxes for this quarter. Basically, he's going to pay the, the the village's taxes for them to the crown. And um, he says, um, and she says, yeah, but when are you going? When are you going to the um, um, to the village? And he says, well, I'm not. You know, I just told you, I've sent money. You know, I've, I've you know suspended their taxes. I've um, um, you know, I've sent grain. I've sent animals. You know, I've I've done this thing like this. You know made loans to the men and um she goes yeah but you're their lord and they need to see you there you need to make a you know how the queen whenever crazy stuff happens she always goes you know just to be seen you know to be seen and so she's trying to tell him my character's trying to tell sir guy look you need to go to your village and he says no because i used to go to the village with my um father he doesn't want to but he does end up going um, she talks him into it also to it. And I think while they're walking on the beach, that's where I'm going to plug that in. Um, because the reason he takes her for the walk on the beach where they meet the Cardinal who really marries them, I mean, they're there kidding around is to tell her that, um, she's free to go and, but he, but asks her to stay. And so before they get into that conversation, I have, I'm, I got to plug that part in. So usually when I have to plug something in like that, since the um, the rest of it's kind of cleaned up a little bit, usually what I do is I just take a separate, make a separate document and then work on that, work on it, clean it up, you know, write it out, clean it up and then stick it, you know, cut and paste it back in. I don't write um, raw stuff at the end of something that's already polished, if that makes any sense. I make a separate document and then I, that way I can work on it, work on it, work on it, work on it. And then when I'm, when I'm, when I'm done with it, then I can um, plug it back in. And that's another good scene too, when she's um, trying to, cause he hasn't been to the village and I don't know how old he is, but he was 13 when his father died. So you figure 13, um, no, he's a little bit older than that. He might be in his middle 30s. So in all this time, he's never vi um, visited the um, um, village because it's just too painful for him. So, um, 
and it was something else about that but i forget and of course um yeah so she so she talks him into to going in and, and of course she says well i'll go with him also to a little teeny bit more than that's it um she i don't put a lot of magic in my stories i don't put um kind of wizards and weird happenings and things you know I, I don't put that kind of stuff in, in my in my story i don't write that kind of thing but um there's like a mysterious character that she lives in the castle she's kind of like a scientist she's sort of like a wise woman you know she has all these um 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 i guess modern is the word um uh, ideas about cleanliness and things to see people just didn't think about things like that i mean they had rushes on the floor which is which is straw basically on the floors um, when they got through eating they threw it on the floor the dogs ate you know the dogs pooped on the floor i mean they you know things like that but in this plus i'm a clean freak so um this uh, particular character you know has these ideas that everyone thinks is crazy at the time that you know you should you know boil things and scrub things and no rushes on the floor in the kitchens and these kind of things um there's a really cute scene that um i really like um in raymond knight um my character of course she's from the you know holy she's from jaffa actually um and of course she's freezing and there's a it's not even winter time yet and there's a a bear skin on her bed on the on her uh, for like a spread a bed spread but it's a, a a skin it's a bear actually what it is is a polar bear skin and um she's afraid of it because you know the head is still on it the claws are still on it, the fangs are still on it you know she's scared of this thing you know and she kind of asks him you know well what manner of animal is this you know and he tells her that it's a bear and she's like oh, so no such thing as a white bear and that's kind of when you um and he says, yeah, yeah, well, I didn't, I'd never seen a camel, but, you know, I knew such a thing existed. You know, I'd never seen a camel until I went to the Holy Land, but, you know, I, I knew such a thing existed or something like that. Really cute. That's a really cute little thing between them. And so she says, um, well, you know, I really, you know, such a beautiful animal, you know, to be killed just for its, its pelt. And he tells her, um, no, 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 no. You know, every bit of it of him was used. His meat was eaten, his, you know, his the entrails were fed to the dogs, you know, the tools were made out of the um um and um and so also another thing, a lot of times writers put their especially I do, their beliefs in um ecology, whatever kind of, you know, beliefs that they have um in their in their writing, in their writing and to uh make it make it personal you know and it's a way to teach you know without actually preaching and so she really um you know so she really ends up liking this thing you know because she likes to wrap it up in it he tells her and finally you know it's to, to you know to grace a woman's bed and um it's kind of a cute um scene between them so i wanted to um talk about because i was talking before about native son i don't want to um start on that because that's going to be a whole disc so let's see um okay i can start on the stuff i've been watching on youtube i think yeah i got time for a quick one um i was watching a lot i had another paper with some with stuff i had watched now i don't i can't find it that's the only thing that you get old and crazy you have to write everything down but it doesn't help if you write everything down and you can't and you can't find it but um, I think I know why though, because um, when I do that kind of work, I don't do it here. When I when I'm working, I don't I don't do uh, I can work on the book here. But I'm when I'm doing YouTube stuff and um, I like to not be in my home doing that kind of work. So when I'm you know doing stuff like that, like I was saying about filling out job applications and stuff like that, I don't do that here in my home. That's business. I do that. Um, either in the office, we have an office um, center in the other building, or I go, you know, over to um, where my um, career counselor and, and those kind of people, I don't do that kind of stuff at home to kind of keep my home, you know, separate from business, basically, because you have to have a refuge. 
in your home. And so I'd written a lot of stuff down, stuffed into my pocket. I'll find it. But um, I did write some things down. What I had watched was some, it was called corset training. What in the world? I couldn't believe these women with these 17 inch waists. It just looked horrible. I mean, it just looked, and it must hurt. I mean, I think corsets are cool. You know, I wish I had one. I'd wear it outside my clothes and just walk around with it on. But I mean, I can't imagine going through that kind of, what does it take your, crush your ribs or your in, internal, or I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But then the world is full of people. You do what you want. And also, too, I saw how they um, um, color the bundles of hair they use for hair weaves. They literally just lay it out and, you know, strip the color off of it if it's black. Well, of course, this has to be human, real human hair. You can't do this with synthetics. But they strip the color out. And like, say, if they want to make it blue or green or different colors like that, they strip the 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 black off basically and then they turn around and um put these different colors in it they have all these blues and greens and it's really fascinating how they do that and then when they you know after they dry it and, and style it or whatever then they they actually um insert it in the in the hair um there was something else that i wanted to talk about was um oh and there was something else really interesting um this girl, like I, I look at a lot of um, drag queen, you know, transformations from, you know, male to female. Yeah, it's very, very interesting um, what they focus on. It's funny. It's, it's the eyes, basically. They do a lot of work on the eyes. And what they do is they do a lot of work with um, um, extending this part of, of this crease here way up here. And then the eyebrows end up being really way up here. And it's, it's a character. And then they pull it, you know, attention down like this and they um it's really a caricature of a woman no women walk around well i did back in the day <laughs> people used to think i was a drag queen that's just how i wore my makeup i was out of control but um it's more a caricature of a woman i'd like to see one just um a drag queen just um you know, just um, look normal, like just like going to the grocery store woman kind of makeup and stuff like that. That would be good. Now, now um, transgender women, of course, they just, you know, they just wear regular makeup. That, that's a whole different thing. But the performers, they wear, and then also too, I'm like, oh my gosh, all this, I mean, layers and layers and layers of stuff on their faces. And it's just incredible. I'm like, oh my God, halfway through the night, I'd be scratching my eyes out, you know, all this stuff on their faces, but their skin looks good. So they must take very good care of it. And they seem to use very good things on their faces. The ones I've seen, they seem to use very good things on their faces. And, but one was uh, very interesting was she went, it was a girl went to Fella. And I was like, holy smoke. I mean, she put a little Adam's apple, you know, with makeup, you know, and she put a little stubble, like beard, like all this thing with makeup. She'd made her eyebrows a little bit thicker. It was very, very interesting. She made the cutest guy. I mean, can you imagine, you know, walking in the club and going, whoa, he's fine. And then, you know, so I think it must have been for, I, I don't think, well, it's none of my business what the white woman wanted to, you know, make up like a man, but it was just fun. You know, it was just fun, interesting, because you always see the other way. That's my point. And to see her dressed as a, um, to see her make up like a guy. And it was so funny because the attitude changed, you know, as she got this male makeup on her, you know what I mean? Her, the attitude changed. The same thing with the uh, 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 transformation from male to female that the uh, drag performers do. You watch them, of course, they speed it up because heaven knows it takes hours. And um, you see them change. You see it, you know, as they as they get closer and closer to the end where they want to, what they want to look like, they get more of a little, you know, they get more of an attitude. They start you know, and doing like that. It's really, it's really fun to watch those transformations. So I don't want to start anything else. I'm going to stop this. And then I'm going to actually 
do a little bit about native son i think and then do a little bit about the um oh i know what i'm gonna do so i'll be back